Welcome to Goldcrest Valley for a manufacturer spotlight with me, Mr. Sealy P. New Holland Agriculture. I'm going to have a look today, a rather self indulgent look, probably. It's not a guide to or anything like that, some fun facts, interesting stuff, but also to look at what Farming Simulator 17 um, has to offer with regard to. Uh, New Holland vehicles and equipment um, this might well be the first of a kind of manufacturer spotlight um, I make no bones about the fact I'd said it a lot on FS15 and I think I did on Goldcrest Valley I'm a fan of New Holland absolutely love them in my let's plays I used all different vehicles all different tractors um, but I think my favourite without a doubt are New Holland's this may be the point where some of you may just switch off and go and look at something else <laughs> because you might be a massive Ferguson fan or whatever but then, you know oh there's lots of fantastic tractors on FS17 and I love them I really do um, so this is a bit self-indulgent but it might be you are interested I don't know stick with it you never know you might learn something um, I am going to start with the tractors so Starting off, we've got the New Holland 8340. This is an old tractor based upon the old Ford style. Uh, I know, uh, I don't know the details, but I know a few tractor companies came together under one kind of umbrella corporation, um, not the umbrella corporation <laughs> from um, Resident Evil, but um, and Ford kind of got swallowed up with New Holland and a couple of others. I can't remember what the other two were now. So the old New Holland designs were very much Ford designs and there was also a Ford 8340. But this is the New Holland version. I think it was on sale 1996, 1997. So it's quite an old tractor. Um, and obviously looking at the sort of squared off boxy design. It is. Now I've put this first only because it's older. It's in the older series of tractors. But this one actually comes a bit further along with regard to horsepower. I think it's got about 125 horsepower. I think all of the tractors I got, I've got them in the largest um, engine configuration, horsepower configuration you can get. And where possible, I've put chunky tyres, wide tyres and all of them. Um, again, self-indulgent only because I like the look of the chunky tyres on the tractors. Anyway, when you buy this one on FS17, you can have the front loader attachment, which comes in very handy. And it's normally one of the base game models. You get these and you get the case 1455s I think they are um, but anyway so that's New Holland 8340 this also is one of those kind of you know it's all well and good if we go into here you can look at a picture of a tractor on there um, but it's hard to kind of imagine when you buy it what does it look like it's sort of three dimensionally um, you know when you can look around the whole thing so just a quick spin around a lot of the tractors so that's the 8340 then we move on to the T5. This is the new range of New Hollands. I say new range, they've been out quite a while. Um, on the start, you have the T designation. That's the um, class uh, of vehicle. And they go from a T5, uh, well, they go from a T4 up to a T9. Um, and then the number after it is the maximum horsepower that you can get out of it. Um, and that's combined engine and PTO horsepower um that you can get out of that vehicle um some of these vehicles come with um uh, the cvt continuously variable transmissions which adjust constantly to the needs and power requirements of the vehicle but anyway uh in game this one comes with a front loader as well i think the first three come with a front loader uh in the real world the t5 120 one um best tractor uh, utility Tractor of the Year 2017 award at the EIMA exhibition. That's the International Agriculture and Gardening Machines Ex Exhibition in Bologna, Italy. Uh, that was at the end of 2016. But this vehicle, the T5, has won Best Tractor, Utility Tractor of the Year. From thousands and thousands of vehicles, hundreds of manufacturers, this one one best tractor pretty impressive stuff um, very very functional I believe they use a lot on dairy farms because they're quite small agile but um, very very useful bit of machinery 
which moves us on to the T6. Now, I think this one, the T5 in-game, only comes with standard wheels on narrow. I think most of the others you can get wide tyres. This one doesn't. Yeah, I think it only comes with standard or narrow, like road crop tyres. Um, and it, it looks a bit weird with the narrow ones, but well, that's one of those things. Standard move, move on to the T6. Slightly larger, T6 160. Um, so that's the maximum horsepower. I think this one comes as 99 horsepower or 100 and I think 117 or something I think so yeah the T5 120 is the maximum horsepower you can have so the T6 160 so moving up the range now slightly larger tractor again they're very chunky looking tractors I, that's probably why I do like New Holland's I mean, there are a lot of different ones on there that I'm, I'm really enjoying using on the different let's plays um, but uh, yeah, really, really good sort of medium use tractor. Um, it won't pull massive machinery, but it will do a lot of jobs you need it to. Um, so there you go. That's the T6, 160. Then we move on to the T7. Now the T7, these are the T7 heavy duties. Uh, in real life the heavy duty is a specific range that's been bought out and it's heavy duty because it's all been beefed up it's got heavy duty suspension heavy duty axles um, it's got new lighting configurations it's got uh, an upgraded engine transmission um, what else all, all sorts of stuff it's heavy duty because it's designed to do heavier duty work than um, than a standard tractor um, i think i've got the t7 315s um i think 313 horsepower i think is the maximum so what they generally do is with the horsepower number on the side it's normally rounded um to the nearest i think it's the nearest five on tractors and i think with harvesters it's to the nearest 50 i'm not 100 percent certain i think it is um if i'm getting any of this wrong feel free to correct me or don't it's up to you anyway so these are the the uh, t7 heavy duties um one of my favorite tractors um and without doubt my daughter's favorite tractor so that's the t7 heavy duty 315 or 315 but there's also as a download the t7 heavy duty blue power it's got a little thing up there it says blue power um basically a special edition vehicle uh, a metallic paint job um, more plush and interior uh, a few little tweaks and bells and whistles been added so it's a kind of special edition vehicle um, still a heavy duty still got everything it, it does everything this one does just a special edition version different paint job that kind of thing um, but yeah, really, really, really nice, nice tractor. They do, often most tra tractor companies do special edition vehicles, like the Massey Ferguson Black, and I think uh, Fent did the Black Beauty, and there are a few different ones out there. Um, they do, they've done Jubilee versions with Union Jacks on, I think different tractor manufacturers have done, you know, whatever their color of their tractor is, they'll do a completely opposite tractor as a special edition. You get gold ones and red ones and all sorts. Anyway, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so these are the T7 heavy duties. Um, for a kind of mid to high range tractor, these do the job. They're really good, really powerful. Uh, 313 horsepower is not to be sniffed at. Um, but then we move on to the T8. Now, the T8, again, I've got this with a chunky size. My only complaint with this on... 15 was that the front tires looked really small and spindly and it just i don't know i i didn't particularly like the look of it but um it's longer and bigger than the t7 it's heavier than the t7 in real life um i've gone with the t8435 so that's 435 horsepower this is a big jump up big heavy machinery um and will pull you know pretty much anything let's be honest on 15 it had crawler tracks on the back of it so it's nice to see that you can have the option now of wheels or crawler tracks um like i said it is longer it's a bigger tractor um but interestingly in the uk these are made uh the basildon tractor factory uh in essex is where they make the new hollands in the uk there might be another factory somewhere else in the uk but basildon it's actually not far away from where i live um but last year the t7s 
from Basildon outsold the T8s by loads because I think what people are deciding or thinking or realizing you're getting T8 package for not necessarily the upright the power at the top end but you're getting everything the t8 can do in a t7 package it's smaller it's more compact it's more maneuverable the t8s are much longer and much heavier so these actually the t7s were outselling the t8s interesting little fact just in case you didn't know but anyway so new holland t8 so next to it we've got another t8 but this is the crawler track version which you had on 15 and it's an option on 17. Again, I've gone for the T8435. Now the crawler tracks, um, because of the weight of the tractors, because they are getting heavier as they go up the class, um, the crawler tracks are, um, they're rubber tracks on uh, New Holland's uh, Terraglide suspension, it's called. Um, it's supposed to be very, very smooth, all the jockey wheels at the bottom. And what it does, it spreads the weight much like it would do with uh like on snow and that kind of stuff you know with snowshoes it spreads the weight of the tractor stops it sinking it reduces compaction um so i think sort of enhanced traction is one of the things it's supposed to give as well um it, i've always thought it looks a bit odd on a tractor i mean the the quad tracks the case quad tracks i think look amazing it just looks a I don't know, it's just me. I mean, it looks cool, don't get me wrong, really, really cool. I think if it had tracks front and back, that would be just awesome. But anyway, that being said, we move on to the big daddy, the T9. This is just massive. Um, it comes on the game with uh, standard tyres, twins, I think wheel weights. Um, in real life, the T9 comes in two body sizes. You have the narrow body size, which is designed more for kind of crop work, field work, that kind of stuff. And they do a wide bodied version as well, which is designed for things like, um, well, plowing especially, but with really big wide plows, earth moving, that kind of stuff, leveling. Um, I mean, these things go up. This one's the T9565. So you're talking a maximum of 565 horsepower. That's huge. These things have uprated axles, heavy duty, pretty much everything. I mean, these are monsters and they will go all day. Um, something that the T Holland range has, or New Holland have tried to achieve, and I think they have, is with the new category, I think it's T4 emissions regulations. Yeah, the four tier four i think it's four b most of these meet the four b which means with certain chemicals certain things that come out of the exhaust emissions they've had to reduce exhaust emissions by 90 percent and i think the new tier four b range have managed to do that plus they've reduced fuel uh cost as well i think fuels down 10 or 20 percent so you're using 20 percent less fuel on these vehicles i mean that's that's pretty amazing stuff um can you tell I like New Holland? Probably probably just a little bit. But it doesn't stop there. Not just with tractors. Oh, no. Harvesters. Combine harvesters. Now, I'm going to skip across this one very quickly, but I'm going to come back to it. We've got the older New Holland tract, uh, combine harvesters. On the game, we've got the TC590. It's got quite a short um, auger pipe we're going to call it um, and this has got a small horsepower rating um, now you can in, in game put pretty much most headers on most harvesters the only thing that holds you back is the length of the pipe because if you buy a header that comes out further than that pipe does unloading becomes incredibly difficult this one generally speaking along with the case 1660 is it tend to be starting harvesters on 15, you used to get the Sampo Rosenlieu C5 Coma, I think it was. Uh, anyway, so that's the smaller of the harvesters in game. But then we move on to this one. Now, this thing is incredible in game and in real life. This is the biggest harvester you can get in game. Uh, tank capacity 14,500 litres. I think it's got a top speed of 24 miles an hour, so it's faster than all the others. Um, this, in real life, the CR1090, 
holds the Guinness World Record for the most wheat harvested in eight hours. It was done in Lincolnshire, I think August 2014, and it harvested 797.7 tonnes of wheat in eight hours. It had five New Holland T7s with trailers emptying it constantly for those eight hours. Um, it, it's an amazing bit of kit. This also, because it has these, I mean, you can have all different header sizes, but to win that, it had one of the big, this is, I think, a 45 foot header, uh, super flex um, headers. It's a massive header, but that extra weight comes at a price because that brings a lot of extra weight over the front axle. So they did the same thing on the 1090, rubber smart tracks uh, with the Terra Glide system. Um, that reminds me before I move on. On this one, the T9, for 2017, new to the range of New Holland tractors, you will be able to get a New Holland T9 Smart Track, and it will be Smart Tracks 2. So it's the new evolution of the Smart Tracks, um, and it has Smart Tracks front and rear. Obviously, that's not in game, that's in the real world, but you'll be able to get the T9 with tracks. If you're a PC gamer, I'm pretty sure there are mods out there, I think, already for that. Um, and it looks wicked. It looks a bit like the Case Pod track, to be fair. Um, but yeah, amazing bit of kit. So anyway, back to the CR1090. Yeah, so it does exactly the same thing. Spreads the weight, reduces compaction, increased traction, but it allows for the fact that because you've got all this weight over the front axle, if you had tires, it would just sink straight in. So it does the job really, really well. And I think in real life, it comes with two or three different width tracks you can actually get when you purchase it so i mean i think with most of most tractor companies if not all tractor companies um and new holland especially the range of what you can have is really pretty much tailored to the needs of the farmer the individual whatever it is you're doing so they're pretty cool now the other thing with this which is fantastic when this was designed i didn't think i put it on actually let me just quickly jump in There we go. Jump back out again. So the lighting array has been designed on this with the lights going all the way around the side. So when you put it onto main beam, these lights light up the entire header width. So whereas before, obviously, because headers were a lot narrower, it would light up what it needed to, they've redesigned it. So on main beam, you can see the entire header width, which is brilliant. The other thing that I love, I love on this, and I've used it a few times for contracting, is on the pipe you've got a light on the pipe so at night when you're doing it it actually lights up all the area around where you're unloading into a trailer so it makes night operations absolutely easy really really easy brilliant harvester lovely bit of kit not cheap in game unfortunately because it's the biggest one it's the most expensive but if you can get reach a point you can save up for it it's well worth it so moving on new holland forage harvesters forage harvesters in game basically make chaff that's their job that's what they do um this is the fr850 now i'm pretty sure these are rounded these are the ones that are rounded to the nearest 50 i read that online somewhere fr for new holland actually stands for forage harvester you think it'd be FH, wouldn't you? But anyway, and the 850, I think this has something like 839 horsepower, which is huge. I mean, that's not as big as the Crone Big X 110, obviously that uh, 110, 1100, uh, which is 1,100 horsepower. But this is a big horsepower. I like the fact in FS17, I said this when I started playing the game, how the graphics and the vehicle details are much crisper, better defined. I love the sweep round of the uh, cabin, the cab, and the, d the detailing just looks better. Anyway, this is the, uh, I can't remember which one this is called now, it doesn't matter, but anyway, you get three headers for the forage harvesters, one that pretty much cuts grass, one will actually say cuts grass, that will cut any crop, that will cut any crop down and turn it into chaff, but yeah, I often use it as a grass cutter. Uh, this one here um, does corn, um, so that's your corn header. And then this one is kind of like a big hoover 
um, it will pick up well it used to it used to pick up straw swaths off the fields and turn that into chaff and in 17 I don't think it does that anymore I don't think you can pick up straw swaths that was my bread and butter for making uh, silage um, unfortunately you can't do that so but it'll pick up grass straw um, swaths on the ground 33 headers and that's your forage harvester so we're still not done yet wheel loaders now this comes under kind of light construction equipment so you've got the W170C New Holland Long Reach. Um, the wheel loaders do exactly what they say. Um, the C versions and the Long Reach versions have a higher tonnage capacity on the boom. These have a stronger boom as well, I think, as I, as I recall. Um, and I think they take something like 5.4 tonnes on the front boom. Which, I mean, that's a huge amount. Um, really, really is a huge amount. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the same with the T7s, thinking about that now. Something to do with the heavy-duty thing. I'm pretty sure over the front three-point linkage, they can take something like five-point-something tonnes, and over the rear, 11-something tonnes. It's, it's a huge amount. Anyway, I digress. Um, High-tip function on this, I think it's something like 0.4 meters what's that 40 centimeters higher tip than the standard versions which means it's better for high tip, higher sided trailers and that kind of stuff but anyway um i think this has got a larger uh horsepower as well 195 was it not sure off the top of my head hang on i have done a lot of research i have done a lot of working this out where are we yeah, 195, I was right. I know my New Hollands. Um, but there you go, wheel loader. That's a mod. Um, the last few bits I'm going to look at on this side are mods. So this is a mod that was on the mod hub. Mod hub, I keep saying mod hub. Mod hub to download. Which moves me on to telehandler. This is one I use a lot on 15. The New Holland LM742. Now the LM series, the LM elites, um they do they have the same thing they have an uprated stronger boom they have a stronger chassis um they've got new engines and transmissions in them uh in the real world i did like this one but unfortunately the manitou i mean for oh, the manitou is almost edging it for me i do like this because it's a new holland obviously but it's got a good wide wheelbase it was a good stable platform i did like it a lot in uh, 15 but because it's on the mod hub as a download it doesn't come standard in the game and the Manitou was a brand new telehandler so I've been kind of going for the Manitou that said if I do Cobra Park Farm I might well use this as my telehandler because I've used now the Manitou a couple of times in Goldcrest Valley and on mine's gone blank Chellington right so telehandlers so New Holland do you know pretty much everything it's quite impressive stuff so these two are both mods as well and you look straight away and think red red and yellow what is going on these are us versions i was looking online and they come under in the new holland agriculture website uh they come under what was it hay tools hay tools and something else and these are designed predominantly for hay um, but the roll belt one especially, I'm not too sure about the big baler, the roll belt one, they do a special version, which does hay as well, high capacity in large numbers, but it also does silage baling, or ready for silage baling to be wrapped. And this will um, make bales of um, high moisture content hay, uh, whereas most balers, obviously the higher moisture content can cause fires because they heat up inside and as the bale is drying out on the outside they heat up and you get bale fires um, but it's designed specifically for hay and silage this is the roll belt 460 the number the designation on the side is to do with the diameters of um, the bales that it produces and then next week we've got the square baler okay this is the big baler 340 does square bales and they automatically come out the back um, don't have to stop for this it keeps going these in the real world will do 110 bales per hour that's quite a lot um, and I think New Holland did 
I don't know if it's a world record attempt, but I know with the new Big Baylor and the Big Baylor Plus ranges, they were doing some testing to see just how many bales they could push out of it. Um, not per hour, but you know, overall. So, whizzing across, I'm gonna skip over that just very, very quickly. Whizzing across, you've got the UK versions. Same things, you've got the Roll Belt 150, and that refers to the maximum bale diameter. So um, 150 centimeters, it's done in centimeters, is the bale diameter. That's the maximum. And they're normally adjustable. You can have two or three different settings for different bale sizes, might only be two. Um, but 150 is the maximum, so that will do 150 centimeter diameter bale. And then we've got the big baler 1290, and this refers to, I think this might be in inches, not in centimeters. No centimetres, I'm sure it's centimetres. The 12 at the start means 120 centimetres and 90 means 90. So it'll do a bale that's 120 centimetres long and 90 centimetres high. Rather large bales. And like the American version over there, these things will chuck out 110 bales per hour. Now, obviously, that's in the real world. In game, I don't know how many bales you could do per hour. It would depend... Um, probably more because the sort of time and ratios are all a bit odd so moving on mowers who knew so new holland discbine 313 with momax 2 technology all very fancy the momax 2 is to do with the cutter bar there was momax and now momax 2 um, the cutter bars on the discbine um, have large discs and heavy duty components. These are designed to cut and mow large quantities of grass or whatever it is you're trying to cut. Um, it's a proper heavy duty mower. Um, the other thing with the Discbine 313 is it has the center pivot point. So when you hook it up to a tractor, it can swing one side it can swing out to the other side and you can adjust it on the fly as you're going you can bring it to dead central you can have it slightly offset it's entirely up to you but it does have this center pivot point so it's not just set one side or it's not set one side or the other you can pivot it across as you go so there we go mowers as well all very fancy which brings me on to the last of the new holland offerings the last that new holland brings to the table in fs15 and this is the new holland guardian boom sprayer this is the sp400 if i can get under that boom or around it the sp400 i think this one is it is 400 horsepower in the real world these come in different ranges of horsepower and different tank sizes um and I did do a guide to on these on Goldcrest Valley. So on my how to and top tip videos, there is a guide to the Guardian boom sprayer, but this is a front boom sprayer, very, very high off the ground, which means these can spray fertilizer and onto crops in their last growth stages. So things like wheat and corn and sunflowers, things that grow very tall, this thing will still be able to do it without damaging the crops at all. Um, incredibly long boom width which means you can cover a lot of ground really really good adjustable height on the boom again takes it up and down very very high advantages to a front boom sprayer is that the fertilizer hits the ground goes into the crops before the wheels or the vehicle go across and kick up dust and mark and whatever which can be a problem with a rear boom sprayer or a trailed sprayer is that the fertilizer then sticks to the dust and particles and stuff that have been kicked up by the vehicle and not as much of it goes into the ground or into the crop itself but there you go that's the guardian boom sprayer and as i said at the start it's been a bit self-indulgent there might be a few facts and things you didn't know you might have never really looked at new hollands or don't like new hollands if you didn't like them you have probably switched off by now anyway um but when alexander saw the breadth of his domain he wept for there were no more worlds to conquer new holland cover all the bases and i think out of all the manufacturers in game new holland has the largest presence i think of vehicles across most ranges there's a lot of case equipment there's a you know there are a lot of very different uh manufacturers in the game obviously we know that but i'm pretty sure new holland has the biggest range 
of equipment. Now, these are only some of the headers as well for the harvesters. There's a much bigger range of headers. I didn't get them all and put them all out, otherwise I'd have no room left. There are different width headers, uh, corn and standard. You can also download the Helianthus headers as well now for doing sunflowers. I did get all three for the forage harvester, but that was, you know, just me being me. And all of these come in loads of different configurations of engine sizes, front loaders, you know. You name it, you can do it. But there you go. That's New Holland. Manufacturer Spotlight. I might do some more of these, actually. I've quite enjoyed doing this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been informative, helpful. You might have looked at a bit of equipment and thought, oh, you know what, I might get that. You might have looked and thought, nah, that's rubbish, don't like it. Whichever way around, you've made a decision. If I've helped you to make that decision, fantastic. If you've liked the episode, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share the video, please be my guest. And as usual, with all of my videos, whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching. <laughs>